Welcome to What is in the Air, where we explore inspired living through simple life experiments. Welcome to another episode of What is in the Air, where we explore or embrace inspired living with simple life experiments and challenges. And I want to talk today about another gratitude experiment. We cannot have enough gratitude in our lives. I'm convinced of that. At least I can't have enough of it in my own life. And so I had devised a series of gratitude experiments. And this one is called the Discovery and Gratitude Experiment. Um, We'll get to it in a little bit. I'm excited about this one. This is another one that was really uh, meaningful for me, and I hope some of you try it out and you find it meaningful as well. Let's let's dive into this. So at mealtime, AJ Jacobs uh, started a family tradition of thanking the many people who helped make the meal before them possible. AJ Jacobs is an author, a number of best-selling books. And and so he tells this, he had a, has a TED Talk. I actually linked to the TED Talk in the article attached to this episode, and you can check it out. But A.J. Jacobs uh, started this family tradition of thanking the many people who helped the meal before them become possible. So, for example, if there was milk, it was thanking the people who delivered the milk to the store, the people in the store who put it in the proper place, the pe- the farmers, all of the different people who were who contributed to that milk making its way on the table, he would try to take time to thank the farmers all the way up to the people at the grocery store. And and one day, and, and by the way, in his TED Talk, he describes this in more detail, and he's probably far more articulate and carefully prepared this message of his own lived experience, but it inspired me, so this is why I'm starting with it. One day, Jacobs describes that his son uh, at the table challenged him to take this a step further. He said, um, basically, I'm paraphrasing it, Dad, why don't you thank these people in person? Uh, because they, I, I guess, as he described it, they weren't a particularly religious family. So they weren't kind of praying and saying, God, thank you for these people. He was thanking the people and the son was saying, well, they can't hear you. Why don't you thank them in person? And so this challenge launched Jacobs on a grand adventure of discovering the many people who helped make his morning coffee a reality. And he literally traveled to them and personally thanked them. And it turned into this grand writing project. And And the TED Talk has gotten a ton of attention as well. And it was interesting because this is relatively new, but this is in parallel with a life experiment that I conducted. So I pulled out my my scribbled life experiment because a lot of these episodes are still continuing to come from my my 50 plus, 100 plus life experiments that I had conducted over the years in the past. But a lot of them uh, I'm prompted to go back and pull out and refine and turn into a life experiment for you uh, whenever I come across something like this, a new piece of research or some fascinating experiment that someone else did. And in this case, it comes from A.J. Jacobs. So thank you, A.J. Jacobs. If you ever hear this, you ever listen to it, I'm grateful for you prompting me to create an episode dedicated to this and an article dedicated to this. So um uh, Jacobs tells a great story. It's really worth watching the TED Talk and, and reading what he writes about it. Uh, so let's let's take a look at this and let's see if what we can, where we can go with this, this kind of uh, gratitude experience. Think of the many people who no, not only make the world better, but they make your life better, even if just in small ways like contributing to your morning cup of coffee. Or how about a simple challenge to reach out and offer a thank you to these kinds of people. So Jacobs did the morning coffee, but what are some of the other things in your life that you've never really paused to stop and and think, um, hmm, who are all the people who helped make this a reality? And to go a step further and to be grateful for them and to go a step further and maybe even personally thank them. This is not about meeting famous people. It's not about networking. It isn't about getting anything from these people. This experiment 
will create the conditions for you to personally experience the joy that comes from showing gratitude. It will give you the experience to connect with other people, though, in a meaningful way. And it'll give you a chance to learn more from those who contribute to meaningful things in your life. It's also a chance for you to practice sharing kind words with others. It's so fascinating, isn't it, that it comes back to some of these simple things. I know you've, you know, the, the book, Everything I Need to Know for Life, I Learned in Kindergarten. Um, and in some ways, there are some truths to that, that. There are some real core basics, and not only about what it means to live a meaningful life, but also about um, what enriches our lives, sort of how we were wired or designed, and and how do we align our life with that with that design. So uh, this is another gratitude challenge. I've had uh, at least two or three of them so far on the podcast uh, because I've yet to find the limits of exploring, learning about, and discovering the rich benefits that come from embracing a life of gratitude. While this challenge is similar to the gratitude email experiment that I did a while back, this one is different in the intended audience. And the prior experiment was really about expressing gratitude to people who are already a part of your daily life at home, work, and among your friends. And this one is about reaching out to those whom you've never met before and discovering many people in the world whose work and efforts, they benefit, even bless you in small or significant ways. So I've put together a life experiment and I have done something quite similar to this, although not the exact one. Um, and here, here's how it goes. First one, begin by making a list of at least 20 things that give you joy or enrich your life in some way. So you're going to just stop and you're going to do a basic written gratitude exercise or written or typed or whatever you choose to do, but you're going to record, you're actually going to write it down or record it on a device, 20 things that give you joy and enrich your life in some way. And for the sake of this experiment, focus upon artifacts, systems, experiences, your list might look uh, something like this, doing yoga in the morning, having my morning devotion time with my family, my first cup of coffee each day, going on an evening run, listening to the what is in the air podcast or whatever podcast um, on my drive to work. Uh, hiking my favorite trail, and you'd name the trail, reading a great book on a rainy day, and maybe it's a specific book, um, watching my favorite TV show, hanging out with friends at the local pub each Friday. And so that's the first step, is you're just going to make that list of 20 things that give you joy or enrich your life in some way. After that, we're going to go to step two, which is looking at your list, try to find out one or more key people who are responsible for making each of those items possible. And I mean like literally specific people, like people who have a name. If you at least try to get it down to organizations or companies and then find some of the people who might have contributed in a significant way to this. So if you have a morning cup of coffee, which company makes it and who are some of the key people who helped make the company a reality? Who are the people who keep it running? For the nearby trail, if you like going on hikes, who maintains it? Who helped make it a reality in the first place? You get the idea. Part of the fun in this project is doing the research of learning about specific people who contribute to that thing that you value and you experience all the day, all, um, every day or many days, and you don't even think about all the people behind it. So take your time with this, but continue until you identify one or more key people behind at least, and this is, I know this is a little bit of work, at least seven of the items on your list. And you can break it up. You can do one at a time and, you know, work your way to seven. Um, so step three then is you're going to block off seven consecutive days on your calendar. I believe that actually uh, chunking this together in seven consecutive days, or if you can't do seven, do it in 14 days and do one every other day. Doing it in in a more narrow sort of uh, time period like this, it intensifies the experience because your mind is thinking about it all the time. It's um, it, and it, it really it really adds to the reflective practice and it adds to its power as a life experiment. So do try to do it. I mean, if you're going to say, I'm going to do this once a month for seven months, it might be meaningful and you can get something out of it, but it's not going to have the kind of the kind of contemplative or reflective impact of doing it all uh, in a concentrated 
uh, set of seven days or 14 days, but I know it makes it a little harder for you. So block off those seven consecutive days on your calendar, assigning one of the seven items and the associated person to each day. Um, Step four, then, for each of the seven days, your task is to locate an email address or contact information and write a brief but considerate thank you letter to that person. If in some cases that person is local or nearby and you want to take the next step, thank them in person or deliver a handwritten thank you letter to them or something like that. Obviously, traveling to people and thanking them in person, it could be a great adventure, a grand adventure. Uh, But for this experiment, you might might want to just start with a letter or an email or something like that. Um, That can be powerful too. Now, if you're up for it though, you could certainly do this. You could certainly uh, take uh, the kind of challenge like I described before with AJ Jacobs and you could go and travel around the world if you have the resources and the time and you're inspired by that I guess but this experiment was actually designed to be a little bit smaller something that most of us could actually try out and do and experience some of the benefits that Jacobs describes but in a smaller level maybe it's even uh, an equal or larger level of in terms of your personal experience and well-being that comes from it but it doesn't take quite as much effort. So um, next one, then be sure to send the email or letter by the end of each day. So if you're going to do the seven day challenge, you're going to uh, dedicate and, and block off a time. I always recommend that, as you know, from the past, block off a specific time, do it in the morning, do it at lunchtime, do it in the evening. I find that morning and night are the times when you're most likely to do it and, and get it done. So block that off as if it's a date or an appointment and you're going to commit to it. And then at the end of the week, or maybe even during the week, I guess, I bet you can guess what I'm going to say, because I say this on all of them. Set aside time to journal and reflect upon the experiment. What did you learn? Did the experiment impact your mood or outlook? How did this experiment increase your awareness of the countless people who contribute to that which you value, that which enriches your life in small or significant ways? And are there any lessons or practices that you might want to continue even after this experiment is over. So maybe you finish this experiment and you think, well, this was great. I want to do more of this. I'm going to pick once a month, I'm going to try to find out a person or two behind something that I love, find out who contributes to making it a reality. And I'm going to send them a thank you or thank them in person if even if it's possible in some cases. So um, maybe you go through it and you say, all right, I'm done with my gratitude. That was fun, but I want to move on. That's okay as well. Let me give you just three tips and we'll uh, finish this one up today. So one tip is doing the work of finding contact information in the adventure of your seven day challenge um, uh, might help you stay on track. So in other words, some people might look at this and say, well, doing all that research up front is a lot of work and I don't want to do that first. So that's fine. Maybe you want to break it up and you're going to do this as a 21 day challenge and you do two days of research, one day of thank you. And um, then you go on to the second one. But um, the other possibility is that you can give yourself a week or so before the challenge begins and you can do all your research then. And you're going to do your research and find out about all these people. And then you're going to put those names into your calendar so that you're going to thank one each of seven days moving forward. You can play around with it, experiment. Obviously, no fixed rule. This is not some kind of empirical study you're conducted. This is a life experiment, a study of one about the experience of one, and that's all. Um, So sometimes this will require a bit of detective work to do the searching, and and that can be part of the fun. Enjoy that. That's part of investigating and the fun, and, and there's a bit of a mystery to it. There's a bit of a of uh, experiencing even a moment of of wonder, a small moment of wonder, like, wow, I never realized that's how this came to be. I never realized this kind of person was involved. By the way, when I've done some of these in, in the past, a number of times I was grateful for something and I did not know that it came from someone local. So I was able to thank someone uh, local or nearby. It's a pretty neat experience to do. And I know that we all have different levels of confidence in meeting uh, people, and this is stepping out of your comfort zone to be sure. So um, stretch yourself, push yourself, but also don't break yourself. <laughs> don't push yourself too far. This is meant to be fun, and it's not meant to be guilt, guilt-ridden. Um, so do what you're ready for, and save the rest for when you build a little more confidence. One of the things I found with these kinds of experiments is that rather than forcing myself to push myself to just do something really wild and out there that I've never done before immediately. Sometimes that works, but other times I build up to it. I build some confidence and I get closer and closer. 
Um, so that's something to keep in mind. And another tip, while you can certainly find and contact the primary source for some things, like the musician who wrote or performed the song that means so much to you, um, you could do that. You can also think about some of the other people, what some might call the little people, but uh, they're not. They're, they're big people because they, they contributed to making it happen as well. So find the other people who contributed to the song making its way to you. Now, here's an example of that. So uh, there was a movie that I was really grateful for. It wasn't actually a daily practice. Like I didn't watch that movie every day. Um, and I think maybe there was a TV show. And I looked at the credits and I looked down the list, you know, you get to the, the end of the credits and these people that I probably never get recognized or thanked. And if you go to a movie theater still, or you watch a movie, you never even watch that far in the credits, unless you're one of those handful of people who watches to the very end. And maybe you find one of those names of people that's kind of a lesser recognized individual and you send a thank you to them or you personally thank them in some way. That could be pretty cool. So play around with it. Experiment with the person that you choose, or you can choose more than one as well. In other words, sometimes you might want to thank the key figure or the celebrity, but it can be just as meaningful, maybe even more so, to contact the others who get far less recognition. But you can be grateful for them and grateful for the fact that the celebrity is not a celebrity on his or her own that there are so many people who help make it a reality. There's no such thing as a solitary celebrity or someone who achieves success entirely on their own. It is a collective effort. So many people have contributed to it in different ways. All right, another one then is, this is an experiment about three different things. First, you're cultivating thoughts of gratitude. Just by writing down the things you're grateful for, even before you reach out to them, you're doing something that's really good and healthy for you, and it helps cultivate an optimistic mindset, a positive mindset. Second, you're putting faces and names to the things in your life that are meaningful. So you're acknowledging people, you're recognizing their work and their contribution in the world. I am a big advocate for the notion of vocation. Vocation is the word that in Latin, it comes from the word calling. And um, I come from a, you know, a strong Christian faith tradition. So I, um, I really see that word packed with some real meaning, like, uh, like, real, like a divine kind of calling. Um, or people have stations in life where, where it's not just about them choosing it. There's something else at work there. Um, but, um, so, so not, 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 but I guess, uh, and, <laughs> uh, and because I believe in calling so much, the, the notion of vocation infuses even the most mundane or ordinary of experience uh, of experiences with some, some really significant, some really powerful significance because the idea, so from the faith tradition I come from, there are two core teachings about loving God and love your neighbor. And uh, the idea of love your neighbor as yourself is really a key, a key teaching. And the concept of a vo vocation comes from this. It's, it's the idea that when I, when I love my neighbor, I'm loving God. And by neighbor, we mean all the people in the world, all the people around us. Who is my neighbor? My neighbor is uh, uh, anyone in humanity, part of this, this sort of human family. And um, there's really no one who isn't a neighbor. <laughs> um, so, so vocation is, um, it imbues everything with this kind of significance and honor and value. Uh, you know, the famous Martin Luther King uh, street sweeper talking about maybe you know, you're going to be a street sweeper or, you know, uh, sweep the streets as if you're doing it for, and I forget the whole quote, but um, you, you know how, uh, you know what I'm referring to here. And um, it, it's this idea that do it with your whole heart, do it with all your might, because you, you're, you're, doing this out of love for your neighbor. And, and again, in my faith tradition, um, there's this idea, uh, for example, there's a passage in the Bible where Jesus says, whatever you do to the least of my brothers, you do to me. So it's this idea that my act of kindness to another person, uh, even in the simplest way, is actually an act of love for God. And so that's something just to, to kind of play around with and, um, and, and, and think about this, that you are you are honoring the vocation, the callings of people. You're honoring the work of people. You're honoring the contribution of people. 
to your life and to the world in, in different ways. I think that's a powerful thing. Some people think that maybe is too far out there. No, that's that enriches life to recognize that, that people are doing good work. It may require more or less skill. Um, doesn't matter. Their time, their effort, their life, the moments of their life, they are giving up to do that work. And that is a gift to us. So we can be thankful for it. Third, you are connecting with others and you're sharing kind words. That is a good habit to cultivate, to cultivate the practice of expressing gratitude and connecting with people around your gratitude for what they do. Our world can always use more kindness and taking on this challenge, you may be helping make that happen. So I want to thank you. Thank you for listening to this podcast. And thank you, if you choose to, thank you for being willing to take on this gratitude challenge and express your gratitude to others. Because I think I think that that helps create a, a much kinder and more civil society, which we can certainly benefit from in this day and age. That's all I have for you in this episode. Uh, as always, if you want to try this out and you do, please share your story. Go over to whatisintheair.com where you can find the Discovering Gratitude Experiment written out for you. So you can find the little recipe and print it out and use it or save it and use it. Um, But you can also click on the share your story link and share your story of this experiment that you've completed and or you've tried. Maybe you didn't even complete it. You can share that story as well. And there's also a link to submit a new life experiment. Maybe you have your own gratitude or some other kind of experiment that you've conducted in your life and you want to make a suggestion. So you can fill it out. And there's a form that forms a little longer because it's written using the different elements that are always present in every podcast episode and every article that I write about this. So there's usually reference to some kind of piece of research or some source that inspire the idea. There's usually a recipe. There are usually some tips. There are a few pieces like that. So you'll you'll find it there. So um, thanks for listening to another episode of What is in the Air. I will see you on the next one. Please take a moment and listen to this brief message from our sponsor, Locus Mindset. Locus Mindset helps highly motivated professionals and entrepreneurs master an internal locus of control so they can attain better health, greater wealth, and stronger relationships. You can start today with the Locus Mindset 15 course. This four-module course is your step-by-step guide to move forward beyond present circumstances and create the life you want. Learn how your brain works when it comes to goal setting, pattern matching, fear, emotions, anxiety, behaviors, and so much more. This program is ideal for you if you're motivated to move forward in your life. You've been feeling stuck in important areas of your life and are sick and tired of repeating the same life patterns, never seeing any real change. And you've tried everything, or what seems like almost everything, and nothing seems to be producing change at the very core of how you feel and how you think. Locus Mindset works with the science of the mind to produce real and lasting change. This is the only goal-setting mindset mastering program that you need because it works with the mind in a clear, evidence-based way to achieve real and lasting change. As you just heard from that advertisement, this episode of What is in the Air is sponsored by Locus Mindset. And just because you're a listener to What is in the Air, this podcast, you can actually get a $25 discount to the Locus Mindset Mastery course. And all you have to do is go over to locusmindset.com. That's L-O-C-U-S-M-I-N-D-S-E-T dot com. And when you sign up for the course, there is a place to enter a code. And the code that you're going to enter in order to get this what is in the air only discount is only for you. You include that, you get a $25 discount. And I think you'll find it to be a really valuable course. I've personally gone through it and I found it to be incredibly valuable. There's some wonderful content there and some cutting edge research and insight. But as you will know, if you don't already from this podcast, content is not enough. You have to do something with it. It's about changing some patterns in your life and some behaviors and some ways of thinking. And this course will give you some great steps to do that. So check it out. See what you think.